Hello everyone. In this session, we want to discuss some other DNS components. We want to look at DNS forwarders. We also want to look at routines, DNS cache, A and PTR records. Let's start with DNS forwarders. In our network here, we have client computers, we have a local DNS server, and we have another DNS server on the network configured as a forwarder. When the user makes a query for a host name, that is a computer within the network, that query goes to your internal local DNS server. If that DNS server has the answer or has the host name or IP address of the client machine, it will resolve that name. But sometimes you want to make a query outside of your network. You want to make a query to a DNS server on the internet. What you can do is you can configure a DNS server on your network to be called what we call to become what we call a forwarder so that any website any address any name that you want to query that is outside of the network it goes through the forwarder the forwarder receives that request and then sends that request out to the DNS servers on the internet. So what you do is designate the DNS server that you want as a forwarder. And you do that by configuring the other DNS servers on the network to forward the queries that they cannot resolve locally. So anything that cannot be resolved locally, you're going to forward it to the forwarder and you can have other forwarders on your network. And by using a forwarder, you can manage name resolution for names outside your network, such as on the internet. And that improves the efficiency of name resolution for the computers in your network. So when you designate that DNS server as a forwarder, you make that forwarder responsible for handling external traffic. And what that does is limits DNS server exposure to the internet. So your local DNS server, it is not going, is not going to be exposed to the internet as much. The forwarder, the computer that you configure as a forwarder, is going to build up a large cache of external DNS information. Why? Because all the external DNS queries in the network are resolved through that forwarder. So when you make the request, and it's an external request for a website on the internet, it goes through the forwarder. And the forwarder goes out on the internet to look for a server that has that website address. When it comes back with the answer, not only does it send the answer true to the client, but it keeps a copy of that answer. So the next time you want to go to CNN.com, what is going to happen is that the DNS server is going to check its local cache to see if it has CNN.com. And if it does, it will simply send you that IP address. And it doesn't have to go out on the internet. So that decreases the internet traffic over the network and also the response time for DNS clients. A DNS server that is configured to use a forwarder 
Again, let's go over this. The DNS server receives the query. This is your local DNS server. It will receive the query. It will attempt to resolve the query by using the zones. And the zones, remember, would be the host name and the IP address. And it can also use its cache because this DNS server will also have a cache. And if the query cannot be resolved using the local data, then the DNS server will forward the query to the DNS server on the network that is designated as a forwarder. If the forwarders are unavailable, then the DNS server will attempt to use what we call root hints to resolve the query. But before we look at the root hints, let us look to see how we would configure a forwarder on the network. To configure the forwarder, I need to click on Tools, DNS. I need to right click on the server, the DNS server, and click on Properties. On the Properties tab, I need to click on Forwarders. I need to type Edit to click on Edit here to type the name of the forwarder, and I'm going to click in the box. I am going to delete and type the IP address of the DNS server that I want to be the forwarder. I'm going to type 192.168.10.116 and enter. And then I click on OK. So I can see the IP address here. I click on apply and OK after I have typed in the IP address. So this server, 192.168.10.16.10.116 is the server that I want to be the DNS forwarder. If you notice here, I have use root hints if no forwarders are available. So you're going to be using the forwarder to forward external DNS queries. But if no forwarder is configured, the server, the DNS server, will use its root hints to be able to go out on the internet to resolve those IP addresses. You want to click on Apply. I want to click on OK. We want to take a look at root hints. So we're going to go back on the properties of the DNS server and we're going to click on root hints. Root hints are the root hint servers on the internet that allow you to resolve the names to IP addresses. If there's no forwarder configured on your network, then the root hints are what enable you to be able to resolve your external names. Servers usually come with root hints, so you are able to resolve your external names by default. However, as you can see in our example here, we actually have a custom root hint. So you could go and you can remove the root hints that comes with the Windows program. And you can customize your own root hints. But it is not necessary to remove the root hints unless you needed to do so for a particular reason, most likely in a very, very secure environment. So the root hints, again, allow you 
to resolve your external names. The queries that you made to go to on the internet, it is because your server has root hints that you are able then to resolve those names. If you remove the, re the root hints, you will have to configure a forwarder. And you will simply do that by clicking on forwarders, as we did before, and add in a forwarder. If there's no forwarder, and you can see here on the forwarder, it says use root hints if no forwarders are available. If we go, if we click on the advanced tab here, you're going to see here disable recursion, also disable forwarders. So if you want to use root hints, you do not want to use forwarders, you can come to the advanced tab of the DNS server property box and you can select the checkbox here besides disable recursion which means that you're also disabling forwarders on your network. We want to go back a bit to forwarders. There's a second type of forwarder called a conditional forwarder, and you can see conditional forward here in the console. And you can use conditional forwarders to forward queries according to specific domain names. A conditional forwarder is a setting that you can configure on a DNS server that will enable forwarding of DNS queries based on the query's DNS domain name. For example, you can configure a DNS server to forward all queries that it receives for names ending with perhaps corp.adatum.com to the IP address of a specific DNS server or to the IP address of multiple DNS servers. How is this helpful? Well, this can be useful when you have multiple DNS namespaces in a forest. For example, suppose you had contoso.com and adatum.com and they merge together as one company rather than each domain having to host a complete replica of the other domain's dns database you could create conditional forwarders so that they point to each other's specific dns servers for resolution of internal dns names to configure the forwarder you want to right click on the conditional forwarder and you want to say new conditional forwarder. What is different from the forwarder here is the DNS name because here what you will have to do is to enter the DNS name of the desired domain to be resolved. So you're actually saying that I just want to resolve names from a particular domain. So I could type a domain. I could type etech. Let's say I have a domain called etech.local. It's a C A L. I would type in that I want to resolve names from that particular domain. And then I want to click here and add the IP address of the server that I want to use. So the difference then between the forwarder and the conditional forwarder is that there's a condition in the conditional forwarder. The condition is that I am only going to resolve names that come from a particular domain. And then I type the IP address of the server and here I can say store the conditional forwarder in Active Directory and replicate as follows and I can say the server that I want the, that data replicated to. So there's a difference between a conditional forwarder and a forwarder.
to recap, a forwarder is a domain name server on a network, and we use the forwarder to forward any queries outside of the local network. So within your local network, if you wanted to query the name of a client machine or the name of a server, that query will go to the local DNS server and the local DNS server will check its cache to see if it has that host name and IP address. And if it does, it will resolve the name of that machine on the network. But if you wanted then to contact a website, that is when, if you configure the forwarder, your query would be directed to the forwarder. So anything outside of the network is going to be directed to this DNS server that is configured as a forwarder. We, we also said that you have something called a conditional forwarder, and the conditional forwarder is only going to forward queries from a particular domain. So when the query comes and that query has a particular domain name in it, then the forwarder is going to forward that query based on the domain name. And you configure the conditional forwarder in the DNS console by right clicking on conditional forwarder. And you have to type the name of the domain that you want the data, the query forwarded from when you are configuring that con when you are configuring that conditional forwarder. When you're doing an ordinary forwarder, they don't ask you for the name of the domain. Any domain can be forwarded. Why would we want again to use a conditional forwarder? Well, you might have an enterprise where you have multiple domains. Say one particular company had taken over another company, so they still have separate domains, and you don't want your DNS server to handle all of those domains. So you say, let me do a conditional forwarder. Only forward information from this particular domain with this conditional forwarder. We also, if you remember, looked at the root hints. So let's look at that again. The root hints were configured by right clicking on the server, the DNS server, and clicking on properties. So here we have the properties of the DNS server, and we clicked on root hints. Now when you click on root hints, root hints would usually have the names of all the root servers, all the root DNS servers on the internet. If you look here, I have put some root server names here. And as I said, when you click on root hints, this is what you would ordinarily see, the name of the root servers. These root servers allow you to actually go out on the internet, even if a forwarder is not configured. So forwarder, remember, the forwarder is not configured by default and you can still get out on the internet. These, this is the reason why, the root hints. Now you can customize your root hints. As you can see here in the figure, we only have one root hint, which means that we had customized root hints, removed the other ones, and left just this one root DNS server. So you can customize that. Otherwise, otherwise, the default is that you will normally have all the root hint servers here when you click on root hints. And the root hints, again, contain the names and addresses of the root DNS servers on the internet. And that is our recap of forwarders and root hints. This is the end of our session, and I want to thank you for listening.